Hello, and welcome to another episode of Nostalgic Mystery Radio. I'm your host, Stevie K, and it's my honor to bring you the radio shows of yesteryear. For this episode, I bring you The Man Called X, episode titled Rendezvous with Death, originally aired November 11th, 1950, where Ken Thurston flies to Burma when a telegrapher is shot in Rangoon to prevent him from sending a message. So sit back and relax, and I hope you enjoy this Nostalgic Mystery Radio. Thank you for listening. Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance... In all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find The Man Called X. Now is the time for all wise men to treat themselves and their families to television. Of course, you're planning to buy a television set someday, but in the meantime, your family's missing seven days a week of the most wonderful variety of entertainment which ever came the way of the human race. That situation's pretty hard for families to take. As a friend of mine discovered recently, when his children pointedly began leaving him out of their prayers and substituting the name of a neighbor generous with his television set. Don't make your family wait for the fun. Visit your RCA Victor dealer tomorrow and choose your RCA Victor television masterpiece from 18 beautiful new million-proof models of all sizes and styles. Like the more than a million American families who now rejoice in the perfection of RCA Victor television you'll find your RCA Victor set the lasting pride and joy of your own life, as well as the best investment you ever made in the happiness of your family. It began a few minutes before midnight in the small, dimly lighted cable office in Rangoon, Burma. Began when an elderly Burmese handed a laboriously written cable to the yawning clerk and then walked out into the blackness of the Asiatic night. Sorry, this office is closing now. We won't be able to... That's the story, Ken. The cable clerk was killed, and a man named Lal Rao has disappeared along with the original cable he'd written to you. Luckily, the Rangoon police were able to make out the message from the impression left by Lyle's pencil on the pad of message blanks. Here's a copy of it. Thanks, Chief. The shadow from the north spreads swiftly over this land. For the welfare of all our peoples, I pray that you will come at once to Rangoon. Signed, Lal Rao. Oh, Chief, you remember Lal Rao? Sure. He worked with the Bureau of the Japs who are in Burma practically ran the underground resistance there, single-handed. Yep. Nothing meant as much to him as his country's freedom. Yes, I know, Ken. But what about this cable? Chief, the United States has slapped an embargo on strategic war materials from Asia. Rubber, tin, antimony. Yeah, no... So what's been happening? We get reports of ten carloads of crude rubber turning up in Budapest. A thousand tons of tin are dumped at a Baltic port. Borneo oil turns up in Sofia. I know, Ken, I know. It's obvious we've been giving priorities to somebody who's been selling us out. Rerouting strategic war materials and shipping them behind the Iron Curtain. Well, what have we been doing about it? You know the Bureau's got men in every ECA country in Europe working on it. Sure. But we don't have any in Burma. Burma? What in blazes is... Oh. Yeah. Take a look at your map. See what lies to the north of Burma. Lauro tries to warn me about a shadow coming from the north. That he disappears. And when you tie that in with the fact that he owns some pretty big rubber plantations... Hmm. Well, Chief? Miss Brooks, book passage for Ken Thurston on the first plane for Rangoon. I beg your 
pardon, but this seat next to yours, it is unoccupied. Why, yes. Oh, do you mind if I take it then? Mine was so close to the engine, and the noise was... No, please. Please do. Oh, you're very kind. Uh, you are traveling to Rangoon, Mr... Uh... My name's Ken Thurston, and the answer is yes. Oh, how fortunate. I am Olga Marovna. Mm-hmm. Why fortunate, Miss Marovna? Well, I, I've always found this journey from Bangkok to Rangoon a most tedious one. Apparently, my luck has changed. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes. You see, I am engaged in what you might call a very specialized field of endeavor. I am a professional hostess. That sounds interesting. How does this business of yours operate? Well, there is little that a woman who is bored can do in Rangoon, except give parties. A number of us are very keen rivals in being the first to host the celebrities at our affairs. I see. I planned a party at my home for this very evening. I should like very much to have you there. Well, that's awfully nice, but I'm hardly a celebrity. <laughs> Perhaps not, but you are obviously an American businessman and one who will be new to Rangoon society. It will be a conquest for me. Well, I... <laughs> Besides... I will be satisfied in, in knowing that I have helped an American to feel more at home in a strange land. Will you be there? Well, after that, how could I refuse? Oh, you're very gracious. And I think you will enjoy it. Oh, there will be other businessmen there, possibly with similar interests to yours. Nitrates, tin, rubber. Oh, I'm certain uh, that you... Pardon, Mr. Thurston, but the radio officer would like a word with you up for it. Oh. He said it was quite urgent. Uh-huh. Excuse me, Miss Morovna. Certainly, Mr. Thurston. Uh, this way, please. Thanks. Oh, uh, Mr. Thurston. Radio call for you from the States. Apparently important enough to bypass regulations. Uh, you know how to operate? Yeah, thanks, yes. Hello, this is Ken Thurston. Hello, Ken. Chief, what's up? Ken, we've had a certain suspect under surveillance for some time as a possible international agent. I just learned that this suspect took passage from Bangkok to Rangoon this morning and is aboard that plane with you. Huh? It may be coincidence, maybe not. But if that agent is mixed up in the sellout of strategic war materials... Yeah. Let's have his description, Chief. It's not a he, Ken. It's a woman. By the name of Olga Marovna. then, Inspector Tegu. What have the Rangoon police found out about the disappearance of Lao Rao? We have placed a suspect under arrest and are holding him for questioning, Mr. Thurston. He is in the next room, even now. Good. What's the story? He had been lurking around Lal Rao's offices for several days prior to the disappearance. He had followed Lal Rao to the Lotus Bloom on a number of occasions. The Lotus Bloom? Yes, a oh. nefarious palace of drink and of pleasure that is located in the dock area. I see. In addition, he has been most curious concerning passengers arriving on international planes. Well, let's talk to him, Inspector. Certainly. <laughs> Come in here. So I guess you've seen the mending of your ways and are going to slip me my release, eh, Inspector? What? Ah, it was about time you learned you can't go around arresting every innocent crook that you see. I'm pretty lucky for you that I... Oh, hello, Mr. Thurston. Pagan. You know this uh, person, Mr. Thurston? <laughs> Does he know me? <laughs> After all the years we've been friends together doing things for me? Inspector Pagan Zelschmidt is without doubt the most unscrupulous man I've ever known. And I trust him as far as I would an advanced case of the plague. Boy, what a terrific reference, eh, Inspector? Huh? Uh, what is your suggestion, Mr. Release Thurston? him in my custody, Inspector. I can use him. What? Oh, sure. You know how invaluable my services are, huh, Mr. Thurston? Pagan, you're going to be living proof that it takes a crook to catch a crook. Well, thank you, Mr. Thurston. Huh? <laughs> You see, it was like this, Mr. X. I came here to Rangoon to be at my Uncle Ahmed's coming out party. Coming out party? Oh, sure. Coming out of the clink, you understand. When I ran into this Lal Rao. Oh, naturally, he was very grateful for how I'd practically snitched Burma from the Japs with a single hander during the war. Sure. How much did you chisel out of Lal? Oh, it was only ten but Mr. Thurston. That's what I thought. But I didn't chisel nothing. He, he paid me for telling him 
where he could cable to you. And besides, I didn't get it. That dirty double-crosser got himself kidnapped to avoid payment. Yeah. <laughs> in, the, in here, Pagan. Hey, wh- what are we doing in this no-good Lotus Bloom joint anyways? To find out who's interested in shipping priority war materials behind the Iron Curtain. Huh? What's that got to do with, with finding Lal Rao? Yeah, let's take this table. I don't get it, Mr. X. I, I really... That Lal, Lal Rao didn't do nothing here except, well, talk to some strictly cornball characters about maybe selling his rubber plantations. Didn't say nothing about any kind of curtains. You wish to place an order, gentlemen? Yeah, for some information. Information, sir? You had a customer here during the past couple of weeks. His name was Lal Rao. This humble one does not remember all the gentlemen who are served here. He talked to some people here, maybe about rubber shipments. This one is not in the habit of listening to customers' conversations. Uh, maybe this will help your memory and your tongue. Mr. Thurston, a tense spot. I want to talk to the same people about the same things. If you find them for me, I'll double that. I will return with your orders in a moment, gentlemen. M- Mr. Thurston, if, if, if you have to be throwing money around, throw some my way. I could tell you for half what you're going to get from him. You could? Well, sure. Well, for instance, that character over there... Going into the back room, oh, the, the one with the, with the shoe sucker suit, yeah. That's the one that Lal Rao talked to. Who is he, Pagan? What's he do? Well, uh, maybe I could find out uh, uh, for, let's say, 50 bucks. I'll give you five. Oh, it's a deal. <laughs> Where will I collect? I'll be here, or I'll be at Olga Marovna's party. Olga Marovna? You know her? Oh, that pretty petunia? <laughs> <laughs> See you later, Mr. Thurston. Yeah. Uh, your friend is right, sir. It's absolutely right. You're, you're throwing your money away, throwing it away. Well, thanks for telling me, but what makes you think so? No, 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 Thurston. Let's not, not, not beat around any bushy, shall we? I heard you talking to the waiter. I'm the man you want, Mr. Stephen James. I'm the man. Very interesting. Do you mind telling me why? Certainly not. I'm a broker, general broker. Imports, exports, insurance. That's me, Stephen James, general broker. Okay, you're a broker, so what? Uh, so you better see me at my office, Thurston. Number 11, Kaising Road, about insurance. Insurance? Right, life insurance. If you're going to play around with Lal Rao's friends, you might wind up quite dead. Very uncomfortable experience, you know. Goodbye, Thurston. You know, Ken, I am particularly happy that you came to my party tonight. Oh, why? So that I may prove to you that my parties are much more enjoyable than those given at the Lotus Room. Oh, how'd you know about that? I'm not a clairvoyant, Ken, but I do have friends. One of them is over there with the perpetual glass in his hand. Uh Uh-huh. Stephen James. Is he an old friend of yours? Stephen? Oh, yes. Very old. And once very dear to me. But those are not happy thoughts for a night such as this. Olga, but my I... dear, your reputation as Rangoon's number one hostess is rapidly becoming <laughs> tonic. <laughs> really, Henry? Heavens, what a disaster. May I ask why? Simply because your guests do not like to see you spending so much time with but one guest. Oh. May I meet him, Olga? <laughs> of course, Henry. He is Ken Thurston. Ken, this is Henry Savadell. Mr. Thurston. Oh, and let me warn you about him, Ken. He is very shrewd businessman who is a good deal more interested in what profit you may turn his way than he is in my reputation as hostess. You are absolutely right, my dear. So if you will run along now, I shall see how badly I can best Mr. Thurston in a business deal. There, Ken, you have been warned. I shall return later to see how badly this wolf of finance has mauled you. (laughs) A charming woman, Olga, charming. Even if she is brutally frank. You seem to do all right along that line yourself, Sabadell. Competition among the shipping and export firms here in Rangoon is very keen, Thurston. And seldom gentlemanly or polite in its mode of operation. Uh Uh-huh. You're in that business? Owner of the Far East Trading Corporation. Rubber, nitrates, antimony, and tin. Uh Uh-huh. Olga has told me you're here on business. If it involves the sale of any such materials, please do nothing until you have an offer from me. I will guarantee both a profit and the arrival of that material at the proper destination. What do you mean by that crack, Savadell? As a loyal American, what else could I mean but what I said, Thurston? Well... If you're interested, you can find me at the Far East Trading Corporation in the morning, number 15, Kai Sing Road. Uh, it's been a pleasure meeting you, Mr. Thurston. Good night. Mm. Good night, Savadell. 
Hmm. Mr. Thurston. Hey, Mr. Thurston. Come to join the party, Pagar? Party, Smarty. Who cares? I'm here to collect my 50 smackaroos. It was five. <laughs> Got some information on that man with the lotus bloom? Sure, already I know him like an old cook. Yeah, his name is Hawkins. And he's willing to spill plenty. All about shipments of stuff that wind up someplace where they're not going. Where's Hawkins now? Waiting for us at the place he works as a bookmaker. Some shipping joint down at the decks called the Far East Trading Corporation. Here. Yeah, there, there's the joint now, Mr. X. Yeah, no lights on. You sure Hawkins is going to meet us? <laughs> Believe me, that guy would meet my Aunt Zenobi at the altar, if there's money in it. Hmm. <laughs> See? Yeah, he's left the door unopened and everything. Come on in. Oh, Mr. Hawkins. Are you who, Mr. Hawkins? It's me, Zellschmidt. <laughs> Down, you idiot. <laughs> All right, Payan, you can climb out of that wastebasket now. Whoever it was, gone. Who, who, who do you think the dirty no good was anyways, Mr. Thurston? Wait, wait, people, hold it. Huh? What's the matter, Mr. Mr. X, the door. Somebody's at the door. Quiet. Thurston? That's you, Thurston? James. What are you doing here? In my office, just a couple of doors away. Saw you come in. Heard that beastly racket. Guess you'll believe old Jamesy Wamesy now, eh, Thurston? Told you you'd need life insurance, didn't I? Sure. Told you. Crummy neighborhood, Mr. Thurston. Characters standing around would maybe cut your throat for a wooden nickel. Even less, maybe. Why do we have to pay visits down here anyway? Well, Hawkins is your friend, Pagan, not mine. And according to Inspector Tago's police records, here's where he lives. Well, he's not home. Why don't we go to a joint I know on a Queen's Road and have a couple of short beers? Oh, quiet. Hey. Hey, what do you know? He's not home. He looks that way. Hmm. One thing about your friend, he's got a nice habit of leaving doors open. The joint is empty, Mr. Thurston. Absolutely. <gasps> Mr. X. Yes. Your friend Hawkins was at home. But, but why do you think somebody bumped him off, Mr. X? Maybe these papers he was working on can answer that. Hmm. Hmm. What are they, Mr. X? Shipping invoices from an outfit called the Astor Warehouse. Astor? Yeah. So what? So they might tell us what happened to Lao Rao and who's racketeering strategic war materials behind the Iron Curtain. Uh-huh. Then, uh, then why don't we figure out uh, what they mean? I'm going to try right now, Pagan, at the Astor Warehouse. <laughs> Boy, what a joint this warehouse is, huh, Mr. Hicks? Huh. Big enough to float the Queen Susie in. And all that rubber and, and metal and stuff. <laughs> what does anybody want with all that junk anyways? Any country that wants to start a war needs plenty of that junk, Pagan. Sure, but, but look where it's going to. France, Switzerland, Italy. Nobody's got a chip on his shoulder there. I know, if that's where it's going. You don't think so, Mr. Thurston? I think Lao Rao could tell us if we could find him. I think... Mm. Mr. X, what was that? What? <laughs> He's up on that rock, Pagan. Let's get up there. Can, can you see anything, Mr. X? No. I thought I heard a door close somewhere. Our friend's probably gone again. Let's look around. Friend, he says... Such friends I wouldn't wish on just that. There should be a law against... What is it, Pagan? I just tripped on a sandbag. Sandbag? Yeah, I'll check with this flashlight. <gasps> Mr. X. Yes. La Rao. Huh. 
Looks like James was right. We're going to need plenty of life insurance unless we get some answers fast. In just a moment, we'll continue with The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. Everywhere today, people who for years have sought a fast-acting way to relieve the pain of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia are turning to Anison. And it's interesting to know that these remarkable tablets work with incredible speed to relieve the pain of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients. In fact, thousands of people have been handed envelopes containing Anison tablets by their own physicians or dentists. If you have not already been introduced to Anison in this way, why not try Anison next time you suffer headache, neuritis, or neuralgia pains? On this generous basis, if the first few tablets do not bring all the relief you want as fast as you want it, return the unused portion and your money will be refunded in full. Anison is spelled A-N-A-C-I-N. Easy to take Anison tablets come in handy boxes of 12 and 30 and economical family size bottles of 50 and 100. And now we return to Herbert Marshall as the man called X with Leon Belasco as Pagan Zellschmidt. Well, uh, I'm sorry, Ken. All I've got is some file stuff, but uh, here it is. First, Henry Savadell. What about him, Chief? He was mixed up in a couple of shady deals during the war. Gray market stuff. Strictly legal, but plenty sharp. His Far East Trading Corporation looks clean. No adverse reports. Huh? Stephen James was cashiered from the British Foreign Office about two years ago. Too much attention to drink and women. Other than that, reputation's okay. Then there's ASTA, Asta. I bet that record's clean, too. You win, Ken. Duly licensed for priority materials. Operates eight tramp steamers. Has never cleared for an iron curtain port. Who owns it, Chief? That's an interesting question, Ken. The officers and stockholders of record are all clerks, accountants, secretaries. Obvious cover-ups for the real owners. But there's one exception. Huh? What's that? The three original petitioners for incorporation. Two of them are bookkeepers. The third is Alga Marovna. Do you mind if I come in for a minute, Olga? Why, no, please do. Thanks. The party has been over for some time, Ken. Yeah. I just came back to check on a theory. Theory? About these parties of yours. Tonight your guests were businessmen and government officials, military men. Hmm? Pretty valuable contacts for making friendly deals. Oh? Yeah. Deals involving war materials shipped through licensed American firms to Marshall Plan countries where... Uh, dummy customers, we ship them behind the Iron Curtain. But uh, what do you think of that for a theory, Olga? Do you mind answering for me, Henry? Not at all, Olga, my dear. I should be happy to, so long as Mr. Thurston maintains his distance. I won't argue with you, Savadell. Or with that Colt automatic. Excellent judgment, Thurston. As excellent as your deductions. Olga did hold these parties so I could make contacts, get customers, arrange private deals, but you made one mistake. Did I? Yes. I stressed the point once before that I was a loyal American. I am. My dealings have been and always will be for the benefit of my country. Well? Uh-huh. And so, my dear Thurston, your accusations are false. I shall protect Olga from them at all costs. The door is directly behind you, Thurston. All right, Sabadell. I'll go. out, Mr. Thurston, that invoice stuff that Hawkins was working on was a system to beat the bank at Las Vegas. No. Sure. Like I say, I got it all figured out how he was going to work it. Oh, well, all I need is a little capital to get started on, you understand. And you and me, oh, we'll, be, we'll be rolling in silver dollars. Believe me, Mr. Thurston, it, it's the chance of a life. Yeah, sure. Huh? What's this place? Number 11, Kaising Road. Let's go in. 
still in the mood to talk about insurance, Mr. James? Well, well, well. So you decided to take my advice, eh, Thurston? Very smart, very smart. Nothing like life insurance to insure your life, I always say. <laughs> Pretty good, eh? Pretty good. I'm talking about a different kind of insurance, James. Different kind? Yeah. Insurance to protect a free world. Huh? What do you mean by that, Mr. Thurston? Ames is an export broker. He'd contract for priority materials and ship them out through Asta, a licensed shipping firm he owned through dummy stockholders. What's that? What's that? He'd send the stuff to dummy customers in legitimately cleared countries and then reship behind the Iron Curtain. You must be crazy or something. It must be Olga. She owns Asta, sure. Olga does. Her, her name's on the list. Sure, because you played over a sucker when she was your girlfriend before Savadell came into the picture. Another cover-up. Huh? That gorgeous Gardenia was... Was this character's girlfriend? She let it slip at the party, Pagan. And here, on this desk... Well, ask the invoices. The same kind that Hawkins had when he was killed. You're doing a great deal of surmising without evidence, Thurston. It all ties in. Hawkins could have been one of your agents who decided to double-cross you. La Rao, a customer who got too suspicious. The invoice numbers, a code for the real destination of your cargoes. Even if what you say were true, such operations would be perfectly legal. The only ones breaking any laws would be the customers overseas who were guilty of reshipping. Hey, is this character right, Mr. Thurston? I'm afraid he is, Pagan. We can't touch on any of that, but we can get him for murder. Murder? Yes. The murders of La Rao and Hawkins. And that gun you're wearing in your shoulder holster will give us all the proof we... Well, get that gun all right, Thurston. Look out, Mr. X! Let's have it, James. Come on, let's have it. <laughs> I said let's have it. Uh, uh, Grab it, Pagel. Uh, I got it, Mr. X, I got it. All right. You have it. Let go. Let go. Sure, be glad to. Oh! oh. Boy, what a smackeroo. <laughs> He's out like a couple of lights. Well, well, I guess we cleaned this one up all right. Yeah, I guess we did, Pagan. Sure. What a pushover. Thinking he could pull the bull over his sheep's clothing by acting drunk. Well, that's the trouble. It wasn't an act. Huh? James and all those like him, they're never acting. They're all drunk. Drunk with greed, with power. James thought he could get away with murder just as long as he held a gun. He found out different. And you know, Pagan... That holds true for certain countries, too. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here is our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. Next week, Ken goes to the forbidden city of Lhasa, high in the snow-covered mountains of Tibet. As Ken Thurston, a warm welcome awaits him. As Mr. X, sudden death. And, of course, Leon Belasco will be along as Pagan Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. It's the Saturday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama, brought to you five nights a week by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television, and by Whitehall Pharmacal Company, makers of Anacin, Coronos, Bicidol, and other fine products. Good night. The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, is a J. Richard Kennedy production with music composed and conducted by Felix Mills. Tonight's story was written by Sidney Marshall. All characters and incidents on this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. Be sure to listen tomorrow evening for The Big Show with Tallulah Bankhead and Fanny Bryce, Groucho Marx, Ezio Pinza, Jane Powell, Hanley Stafford, John Agar, David Bryan, Frank Lovejoy, and Meredith Wilson. And until next week, same time, same station, this is Jack Latham saying good night for The Man Called X. For a maximum of fun, hear Tallulah and The Big Show tomorrow on NBC.
This has been a Nostalgic Mystery Radio presentation. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please feel free to like and rate this podcast on your favorite app. Also, there's a Nostalgic Mystery Radio YouTube page for your perusal to subscribe to. You can contact me by emailing me at nostalgicmysteryradio at gmail.com. I hope you have a blessed day or evening. And again, thank you for listening.